My name is Hannah, and this is my year of less stuff. Hey y'all. Okay, here's the tea. I just finished filming the second installment in my what is turning out to be a three video series about what I bought at Sephora in the year of 2017. And in theory I should be filming the third installment now, but I just can't hack it. I have to film another video because of timing, but I need a break from that topic. So I'm going to film this video, which is something I've been planning to do for a while and I'm excited that it's finally time. It's a review retrospective, so I'm going to revisit all of the products that I purchased specifically for review on my YouTube channel from January through to now, the middle of the year, and just revisit my reviews and talk about whether my feelings have changed or not, give you any updates on the products, have I kept them, have I continued using them, do I feel the same way about them? I mean, you guys get what I'm doing. I'm gonna blah, 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 blah. I will, of course, complete that series about my 2017 Sephora purchases. The final video in that series will probably be the next one I film. I think I just need to do it tomorrow <laughs> instead of today. If this is your first time to my channel, Welcome, I'm Hannah. I am a deep and passionate lover of beautiful things, but I used to have a problem by which I overspent, seriously overspent on beautiful things, and it took me a long time to recover from that habit. So on my channel, I try to maintain a balance. We talk about how much we appreciate beautiful things, but not at the expense of our financial health because it's just not worth it. If that kind of content sounds good to you, please subscribe. Let's go ahead and to get into the meat of the video. The first products that I purchased for review this year were from Glossier. I placed a Glossier order. I bought three products that I hadn't tried before and I reviewed them in January. And I only have two of them on hand because the third one was the mascara. And you might think that what I mean by that is that it's been over five months since I opened that mascara, which means that it has run its course. But the reality is that I really never got that much use out of it and I ended up decluttering it even though it still worked. I decluttered it out of spite, I would say, because it is exactly the opposite of what I want in a mascara. And I think that I may have been more charitable in January than I feel now, and this is why I'm doing these review revisions. I actually didn't go back and watch my review, and I probably did say in that review that the mascara didn't really do it for me, but I can say with more vim and vigor now that it's garbage to me. I think that they were trying to make a mascara, that does all of the things that I don't want a mascara to do and that doesn't do the things I do want a mascara to do. So to their credit, they nailed it, but they were trying to do a thing that I just don't agree with. Every once in a while over these past five months, I would take out the lash slick and try to make it work for me. I always just felt like it made my lashes thinner. It made them less dramatic. It just coated them with a little bit of sort of shiny black paint substance, almost like an ink. It was like an ink not a mascara. And on top of it, that super spiky wand would sort of comb through them, cause them to seem thinner and more wispy and kind of cause them to just be these individual, in some cases, stuck together, but without any kind of good clumping. I just ended up really, really being eager to shuffle it off the mortal coil of my makeup collection, and I did do that in a recent video. So my updated review is down with Glossier Lash Slick. If you're someone who wants length and volume, up with Glossier Lash Slick if your lashes are literally perfect as they are, like you love them how they are, and all you want to do is make them a little bit darker. The Glossier Future Dew was by far the most successful product of that review, and it continues to be that. I do love it. I use it a lot. I haven't been using it as much in the most recent months, I think because I truly conceive of it as something that adds a really dewy, lovely, lushy surface to the skin, like a like a lushy layer to the surface of the skin. Really lovely and iridescent and super dewy looking, but without really giving any lasting power to your makeup. Like I really don't think of it as a primer anymore. And in that video I was like, 
they they branded it wrong they kind of labeled it as something that confused me and it took me a long time to getting around try to trying it because they branded it as skincare and in that video i was like you guys it's a primer they should have called it what it is it's a primer it's a primer it's a primer and funnily enough i just i currently think of it as my least primy of my primers what i often do with this i would say the capa the capacity in which i most often use it is on my cheeks because I just love the way it makes the cheeks look and so sometimes I'll double prime I'll put on a different primer first one that's maybe like a little bit less beefy a little bit less slippy and then I'll just put future dew all over my like cheek and nose area kind of like a primer version of gloss all across I do use it all over the face on days when I'm pretty sure that nothing is gonna challenge the tenacity of my makeup but these days something is challenging the tenacity of my makeup often and that's wearing a mask and I feel like if I'm going to be wearing uh, a primer with makeup over it and then putting a mask on and hoping that the primer helps with the longevity of my makeup future wouldn't be my first choice for that but for just like a beach makeup day or like a staying indoors all day makeup day which is something that I'm doing a lot or just for filming or something I do reach for it pretty often it's just that the VDL Lumi Layer primer is my favorite primer of all time and I as much as I really appreciate that I don't like it better than I like that one lastly from that review the glossy generation G I said that I hadn't tried these products before and that was mostly true I had uh, an early iteration of generation G but I hadn't tried the new formulation so I knew that I liked this color Leo quite a lot it's like a really awesome Mm, like a gritty brown. The thing that I really loved about the first generation G lipstick that I bought when it first launched, so I guess you would say it was like the first generation of generation G, the thing that I really loved about it was the color. But I was so frustrated by that early Glossier lipstick. I was frustrated by its lack of longevity. So I would put it on and I would be like, oh, it looks bomb. I love this rich brown color. And then like two minutes later, I would look in the mirror and I would be like, there's nothing on my lips. This one does have much better lasting power. It's just not a very glamorous presence in my collection of lip products and I overlook it all the time. So my retroactive review of this is that I wish I wore it more because I feel the same way about it today that I did when I first got it and when I made that review in January, but I'm not wearing it at a frequency that supports those feelings and I feel like that's not the fault of the lipstick it's my fault so I'm gonna try to wear this more it is a great product I, I still stand behind my review the next self-sponsored review that I filmed was in February and it was these Gucci products and I am going to speed through my retrospective reviews of these at a fast clip because I recently featured both of them in my video about the best luxury makeup that I've ever tried and the fact that they were featured in that video should tell you something about how I feel about them. I'm just saying that in case you haven't seen that video. I really, really love them. And I know that this is going to sound a little bit silly because I did buy them like I physically bought them myself. I bought them with my channel budget. I feel really lucky to have these because they, because it was a self-sponsored review, they feel kind of like PR to me. Like my, my business, my YouTube channel purchased these products and then I was in the lucky position of being allowed to adopt them as my own after I filmed that review. That's how I feel about these. They feel like super special treats. And I said in that video that when I run out of this mascara, which is it's probably going to be like in a, in a month or within a month because I've been using it assiduously since February, when that happens, I won't replace it. I do love it. At this point, I feel like it's the best mascara I've ever tried, but my feelings about mascara are pretty fickle. It does everything that the Glossier Generation G doesn't do. It, it just gives me everything I've ever wanted in terms of buildability and uh, sort of like richness and clumping in towards the base of the lashes. I just really love it. Um, and then this one, if I, if I lost it, I, I don't think I'd buy it again. And I, you know, I might have said, again, I didn't go back and watch the review. I might have said in that review that I was so into this that I would buy it with my own money. And I understand why I said that at that time. I'm very on the fence about whether I would buy this with my own money if I lost it or not. I think I think I probably eventually, maybe not right away, but I think I maybe eventually would bring myself to do it because I really do feel very covetous and, and special 
about this product. In case you're unfamiliar, it's the Gucci Lip Voile. So it's the sort of semi-sheer formula that Gucci came out with. Um, I'm considering buying it in, in a nude color, but I probably won't spring for it. That's how I would feel about this if I lost the red color. I would It would always be on my wish list until I either received it as a gift, bought it myself, or didn't do either of those things forever. But it would always be on my wish list. So then there was a bit of a gap in my self-sponsored reviews. I skipped March, and I think I picked up in April with the Becca Love highlight. It might even have been May. I, these quarantine months are all kind of running together. But I then reviewed three things in short order, close together, and the first one was the Becca Liquid Highlighter in the shade Love. I don't have it on me because I decided that I wouldn't keep it when I reckoned with that batch of items, and I gave it away. But my feelings haven't changed about it at all. I, I, I mean, I think actually, if anything, from the, from the video review, my feelings changed in that I decided I liked it even less. So in the actual video review, I said that I thought I probably would end up keeping it because it looks so beautiful on the body, that I would keep it and save it for the resurgence of tango and I could wear it when I went out dancing or if I was ever like going to an outdoor event like outdoor brunch or going to like a party on the beach or something I, mean, I don't know when I when I would ever go I don't know if I've ever been to a party on the beach but you know if, if I was like showing a lot of skin at, a, at an event I imagined when I did the video review that I would want to put it on my body because it did look very beautiful in spite of the fact that it was sticky really heavily scented didn't dry down had like a weird oily consistency didn't blend well with other products blah 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 but I put it on part of my body for that review so you could see how it looked on the body. And then later that evening, it got everywhere. It got all over me and my clothes. It got all over Joe. It got all over our stuff and it got into our washing machine. And then the next time we washed clothes, the clothes came <laughs> out with glitter all over them. And I was just like, I'm never gonna put this on my body again, no matter what event I'm going to. So my revised review of that is that I dislike it as much as I said I did in the review and I didn't even keep it for for a future beach party. All right, you guys, this is the doozy, the Patrick Ta Major Brow. I posted a review of this product on April 19th, and it is one of the most glowing reviews I have ever given a product. And everything that I said about it holds true completely, if not even more so. I think that this is absolutely fantastic for the hold that it gives to the brows. There are a couple of little details that I wanna share. In that video, I applied it to my brows and then I pressed it with the edge of the brush, with the, the ferrule of the brush, pressed it and pushed the brows like just to, to paste them to my face. But I've learned over time that if I press and push too hard, it'll like move some of the wax out of my brows onto the skin above my brows. And there have been some days when I've like touched the skin above my brows and it's been like all thick with wax. And that's also counterproductive because you're moving the wax out of your brows and if it's up here then it can't help hold your brows down. So I've stopped doing that and I've started just pressing. I'll, I'll work up some of the product. I'll sort of like paint it into my brows. Then I'll just press my brows down with my finger rather than pressing and pushing like a squeegee. And then once it starts to set a little, I'll go back in and move the brows around with the spoolie. And I just feel, I mean like today is an example. I just, I've recently dyed my brows and I used only this to shape them and put them into place. I had total control over every single hair. And I just feel like my brows have been looking super fierce. So I'm die hard for this product. I don't take back anything that I said about the way that it functions. However, I have almost used it up. And this was a concern some of you raised. You were like, it looks like you used a lot on the first try. And I was like, no, I didn't. There's barely a dent in the surface of it. Some of you asked in the comments and I was like, I think it's gonna last a while. It's hard to tell, I'll report back. This is me reporting back. It has lasted me two months and I would estimate that I'm gonna get another month out of it because it's shocking. I'm like, I'm like scared to, to show you. I, I feel like all of you, I feel like 30,000 people are gonna be like, a scandal. So it looks like it's almost gone now, but 
there's so much product built up in the corners, like around the edges, that I know that it's going to take longer than it seems like it's going to take for me to actually scrape it out and use the very last bit. I am predicting that I'll use the very last scrap of it in mid-July, and I will definitely report back on the day that I completely pan it. Maybe I'll even post on Instagram or something, but I'll definitely report back with the data of exactly how long it lasted me. But it's looking like it's going to be about three months. So $22 every three months, that's about $7 a month to make you for me to make use of the Patrick Ta brow wax. That's like a Netflix subscription, right? I mean that that's that's intense. I feel like I'm subscribed to the Patrick Ta brow wax. However, there are a couple of things we need to take into account. One is that I am like a monster with product. I tend to just use a lot of product. I it's like if a painter was like painting a really gooey goopy oil oil painting with like lots of textured expressionist stuff and and so she like gets her oil paint and she's like Bleh, and like squeezes out a huge blob of it and she's like I'm going to town like that's me every time I sit down to do my makeup I'm always just like doing the most using the most and indeed with this product I'll like get it wet and then I'll like dig out a bunch of it like I'll get a whole big booger worked up and then I'll like stick that booger into my brow and then I'll just like move it around and move it around I'm just trying to tell you that because of my personality I'm probably using more every time I use it than I need to. And what I would really like to know is what your Patrick Ta brow waxes look like. Those of you who told me that you bought it after you watched my review and you've been using it pretty much as long as I have, is this your situation? Like how much of a monster am I? I just need to establish that so that you know that if you have like thinner brows than I do, or if you're a little bit more dainty in your application of makeup than I do, or if you're not gonna be using it every single day like I do, because that's the other thing, I use it every single day. And I'm just, I'm vigorous, okay? So if you're gonna be less vigorous in your use, I could easily see someone getting six months of use out of this instead of the three months that I'm getting out of it. The other thing, and I did touch base on this in a, a video recently, the other thing is that I notice a lot of product gathers in the spoolie. So sometimes I, I just like wet the spoolie and I squeeze and work the water into the gathered wax in the spoolie and then I can get more than enough product from just the spoolie for an application to my brows. And I just haven't been as careful about that as I could have been. Like I, I could have made it last longer if I had applied myself better to trying to make it last longer, but I haven't. A lot of days, even though there was st stuff in the spoolie and I could have gone and gotten it, instead I just went right into the compact and dug more out of it and used more than I needed um, because it was fun. So that's my revised review of the Patrick Ta Brow Wax. Literally nothing has changed in terms of my appreciation for it, which is saying something because the review was a first impressions and I was over the moon. I was like, there's nothing bad about it. I, I couldn't believe how amazing it was, but it looks like it's only gonna last me about three months. So the product that I reviewed after the Patrick Ta uh, was the Rowan 1111 Quad. I brought, brought it over in its little white velvet pouch to show you. And this was the third Rowan Quad, and the, the review video is in many ways like a comprehensive review of all three quads because there are a lot of swatch comparisons. I talk a lot about the formula at large and the differences between the formulas in all three quads. I love this, and I have ended up using it, since I purchased it, I've actually ended up using it more than the first one, the bronze, what is it, the 75 degrees warm, the warm quad. In that video I said that, that was that's my favorite, that this one was my second favorite, and that the cool one was my third favorite. I still stand by that, I still think that those warm, just smudgy, deep bronzes in the warm quad, if I had to just pick like one Rowan shadow to have it would be one of those but I've used that I've used this more than the warm one since I've had it and so it really is like they're they're almost neck and neck with the warm one just pulling ahead a little bit and when I reviewed this I hadn't owned it for long enough to be able to know whether my use of it would continue to be as excited and as assiduous as it was when it was new it no longer feels new to me and yet I reach for it all the time and I'm constantly delighted by it and um, I've really loved using the sort of the rainbowy cool tone shade 
I had it on in a video recently. It was the videos that I shot in the studio. I had that cool toned shadow from 1111 on my eyes. And when I was editing it, I was like, damn, damn, it's just so pretty. The, the shade and the way it shifts and just the overall impression, it, it is so, so pretty. So I, I don't think I have an edit to my review of this. I, I think I just wanted to report back and say that it has continued to hold its own, even though the flush of, of newness, the novelty of it, has worn off. And then lastly, the Fenty Cream Blushes. This is the thing that I most recently reviewed, and shocker, I don't have them anymore. I already gave them away. I decided to preempt the reckoning with them and mail them off to my friend, Angelica Nikvist, because she mentioned in a video that she can't get them yet in Sweden. They don't have them yet in Sweden. And I had already kind of decided that I definitely didn't want to keep the orange one, uh, Fuego Flush. And I thought as long as I was sending it to her, I might as well send them both to her because I, I do really like the other one. I did really love Rose Latte. I mean, you guys saw me saying in the video how much I absolutely loved it, but I have a color dupe for it in my collection. And I'm, I'm not going to get through that Lila B blush forever. Like I'm not going to, I don't know if I'll probably ever pan that Lila B blush. And, and it's just the idea of being able to give them both away to someone who's a fellow YouTuber and a friend so that she can talk about them on her channel and being able to send them together and so she can try both formulas and both colors as opposed to just like keeping the one for myself even though I have a color dupe for it and just sending one to her. It was just, it was a no-brainer. So when I was putting together that package for her, I, I popped them both in the mail and I sent them off last week. So Angie, if you're watching this, keep an eye on the mail. They'll probably be arriving I, hopefully soon. I, I couldn't afford like the super speedy <laughs> international mail, so they might be crawling to you across the pond, but keep an eye on the mail. And I guess I feel like my decision to give them away, to give them both away, is just the last piece of information that I would add to that review because it was a pretty recent review and I didn't keep them for very long after I gave the review. So I really didn't have much more to learn about them. I think that the shocker is probably that I decided to part with both of them. So I do think that Rose Latte is a beautiful, Rose Latte, I'm sorry, I always thought it was Rose Latte and it's hard not to default to that. Rose Latte is a stunning blush and if I only had one or two blushes or if I didn't have a color dupe or I don't know, if I had a smaller collection or if I was living a different life, I would have totally kept it. My choice to give it away had nothing to do with me being disappointed by the formula. And Fuego Flesh, I've, I haven't even tried it on. I didn't even try it again after filming that review. So yeah, everything I said stands. And that is it for this video. That was me reviewing, re-reviewing all of the products that I have sponsored, review, sponsored myself to review since the beginning of the year. And uh, at the end of this month, I'll, I'll think about maybe what I want to try next. I decided that I would do the equivalent of one a month. So these were six. Is that right? Yeah, I've done six so far. So one for every month of the year so far, even though I didn't spread them out very evenly. And then I'll start doing the equivalent of one a month again in July. So let me know what you'd like to see me review in the coming months. I appreciate you so much for being here. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself today so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 